That was with the machine maxed out with a 110 plug on auto setting. And this looks, looks like it has a little bit too much wire feed for the voltage. So I'm gonna manually turn it down and do the backside. See how it's humped up a little bit. Or I guess let's try breaking this first. The hardest way to break it would be smacking down that way. So we'll flip it over and see if it'll peel back off that weld. Okay, so it didn't fuse into the base. So this weld, I turned up the voltage independently and got out of their automated weld settings. You can see there's a little more spatter, but the wire feed was a little bit lower in relation to voltage, so it burned in a little bit deeper instead of piling up too high. So that time it was a bit stronger. You can see here where it tore off some of the metal on the vertical piece and then it fused and stuck into the base piece better but still it's not very good penetration. You can only, you can only do so much with a single pass with a little 110 welder. This is 3 8 thick steel. You got a few options if that's all you have for a welder and a power supply. You can preheat this with a propane torch or an acetylene torch and get it hot so it flows in better. Or you can do this exactly how I did it and then multi-pass it, stack some welds on it while it's nice and hot and they'll start flowing in better. Or you can grind out your vertical piece into a nice sharp V and then still preheat your base and get in there and do a multi-pass on each side. Or the best way with the little welder like this is just to use um, flux wire and no gas. This is the, this is the same little welder and see how good there's a little spot of porosity here. I didn't clean it good enough, but look how nice that lays in there flat. It's like a perfect little 45 degree angle here and here. Nice little flat weld. Thanks for watching.